Shabbat Shalom. What's up, folks? Today is the Sabbath. So today, the word is election or governing kingship rulers. And where did that come about? And the reason I'm starting with that today is because I've been talking in the past about how people for some reason you assume that you under another man or somebody that's over you, somebody that need to speak on your behalf. When um, the actual script, the word was written down, all the men to govern themselves and it, we were to be governed by this word. Now, I know you have to have governors or people put in place, but you wanted to put those people in place based on their morality or their ability to hold down these laws themselves. So today I'm reading from Deuteronomy 1. I'm starting at the beginning. And Deuteronomy is the book of Moses, basically Moses' personal journal. Um, I don't know who wrote it and what I say about any of the scripts. Um, these scripts are stories. They're lessons that we're supposed to use. I get that now. And again, I said on the last video, people want to take them so literal. But there's stories to be used and in the pursuit of the order in the book that the creator gave us you know what i realized about the worship of our creator here in america people make a big play or put on some kind of show celebratory to make people think or you want them to perceive that you doing this thing when even in cultures that say like a voodoo culture, um, they actually have work in. You see them doing stuff like the lifestyle, not just putting on the show. They actually look like that. Their lives reflect what they believe culturally. And when you look at Christianity, you see absolutely no culture or anything serious behind it. It's all about ritualistic celebrations and the look for people to say, oh, I do this or I participate. It's kind of like wearing a uniform, but not having no game. You know what I'm saying? So um, when we choose the leaders, when they pick the leaders, what I'm seeing here, it was based on the word of the order of God. So I wanted to start at Deuteronomy 1 today, and I'll probably end up at um, 1 Kings 8, but I'm not going to read that far. It's just going to show you the... Um, the contrast, or actually not the contrast, it'll support Deuteronomy 1. So um, if y'all have your Torahs, um, and that's what I'm going to read from from here on out. If I reference the King James Version, it'll probably to be to show you where it's bullshit at. You know what I'm saying? To show you the the changeover from this to that. The last thing I did with that was... um. um I, not Isaiah. What was it, y'all? First Kings 10. First Kings 8 and 10, I believe. First Kings 8 and 10. And it's about uh, Solomon. And this is where the number, the three sixes first come into play as um, a covenant with Solomon and basically other nations with gold. So the way to the gold, and I, and I referenced the uh, 666 as the mark and the beast, is where they take in the book because they had it. Those people no longer existed. I covered that before too. Let me not go to that anyway. Check some of the videos out. All of this stuff is on them. And they should be aptly named so you can figure it out. All right, y'all. So... Deuteronomy 1, these are the words that Moses addressed to all Israel on the other side of the Jordan, through the wilderness in the, excuse me, through the wilderness in the Arabah near Soph between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dezahab. It is 11 days from Horab to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Sirach. It was the, four, excuse me, the 40th year on the first day of the 11th month that Moses addressed the Israelites in accordance with the instructions that the Lord had given him for them. Now, see, 
me with numbers, y'all, I'm a little different, and I like to break stuff down. So you don't get caught up on the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month. None of those numbers mean anything if you don't keep the order of God, right? If he didn't say to do it on those that day, you understand? This is how you navigate. Y'all get caught up on little shit like those numbers, and those numbers don't mean anything. It's, it's in poetry how this word is spoken or the people that wrote it down at the time. And, of course, language and dialect changes as you move in this direction, that direction, as years go on. We don't speak the same anymore. And what was deemed unacceptable at one time is now the norm. And you see that with sexual behavior. And for me, um, that's something that the creator wrote down. Like, your sexual behavior should be the same all the time. He never said anything about language, right? And you surprise how many people are offended when you say stuff like fuck, shit, dick, bitch, ass. You can't find this written down anywhere in the scripts. That's just a man saying, hey, look, that's offensive, dog. And the creator won't charge you with that. And it's amazing, right? And that's a problem with navigating this book. The comprehension is, is a thing of whatever. The ritualistic service is what most people are interested in. And believe it or not, there's provisions in here to shut that down, saying, I don't care about your feast and your festivals. Your party is really what I'm interested in. Your service. Those other things, y'all try to take place at actual, you know, your heart's being tuned into divinity. You want a symbolism of it. And that's where Christianity and Judaism and even... um. Not Islam, but being a Muslim came in. When they start looking at these objects, y'all understand? So you can take it personal, or you don't have to take it personal, because I don't know any of y'all personally that's involved in Christianity, that's involved in Judaism, or that's involved in being a Muslim. See, that was around before y'all. Y'all just attached yourself to it and say, this is the thing that's right. And I'm like... So that's as simple as saying a baseball player saying, this is the thing that's right basketball player the same thing when it's all sports and it's got to be a moral compass for you to participate in any of that shit so back to this after he had defeated Sahan king of the Amorites who dwelt in Hezbon king Og of Bashan who dwelt in Ashtaroth and Edri on the other side of Jordan in the land of Moab Moses undertook this to expound his teachings he said the Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough in these mountains. Start out and make your way to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in the Arabah. The hill country of the Shephelah, Negev, the sea coast, the land of the Canaanites, and Lebanon as far as the great river of Euphrates. See, I placed the land at your disposal. Go take possession of the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to assign to, assign to them and to their heirs after them. Thereupon I said to you, I cannot bear the burden of you by myself. The Lord your God has multiplied you until you are today as numerous as the stars in the skies. This is Moses saying, I can't deal with these fuck nuggets by myself no more. All the fighting, the bickering. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase your numbers a thousandfold and bless you as he promised you. How can I bear unaided the trouble of you and the burden and the bickering? Pick from each of your tribes men who are wise, discerning, and experienced and I will appoint them as your heads. He counted on the people, right? You see this election, the vote? And it's based on people that's wise, discerning, and experienced. When y'all go out here and vote, are these the people that you voting for? Are the people that you voting for, are they morally sound off the word of the creator? If they not, if they don't check any of those boxes and you go out to vote, then your hand is on whatever happens to the land. So, again, good things happening, bad things happening to good people. You good by your own determination. Me, that's the difference between being able to comprehend this word and doing that ritualistic thing y'all going to do to Marvel and pretend to the creator like, y'all mess, man. 
Pick from each of your tribes men who are wise, discerning, and experienced, and I will appoint them as your heads. You answered me and said, what you propose to do is good. So I took your tribal leaders, wise and experienced men, and appointed them heads over you, chiefs of thousands, chiefs of hundreds, chiefs of fifty, chiefs of tens, and officials for your tribes. So y'all see this hierarchy, this thing, how it's community tribes and, and all together, but it's order at every level. And your community has got to be order. That's all this whole thing is, territories. And each territory has got to be governed off of order and off of morality. When you allow the slightest bit in, then that's what it is. And if you vote for officials that that turn their back on it, then that's what you get. So every time you see Israel get punished, no matter if it was one person that was good in the land, the whole land got punished. But that person that was good, that was in that land, by the goodness of the creator, they never got punished. You see Daniel in the land, he never got punished. He was there. He actually rose up when the rest of them got punished because he stood on his morality to the word of God and the sight or whatever was around him. He's like, no, thank you. I ain't going to eat y'all food. I ain't going to act y'all way. And he got raised up in the foreign land because of that. You know what I'm saying? Well, it wasn't a foreign land in captivity. All right, so I took your tribal leaders, wise and experienced men, and appointed them heads of your chiefs of thousands, chiefs of hundreds, chiefs of fifties, chiefs of tens, and officials for your tribes. I charged your magistrates at that time as follows. Hear out your fellow men and decide justly between any man and a fellow Israelite or a stranger. You shall not be partial in judgment. Here are low and high alike fear. No man for judgment is God's. And any matter that is too difficult for you, you shall bring to me and I will hear it out. Thus I instructed you at that time about the various things that you should do. So all the laws and rules of a God-fearing society is based on the word of God. Not your fears, not your emotions, not any of that. Now look. What's big in the news right now is marijuana, right? Whether it should be legalized, <laughs> which is so funny and most people don't get because, again, y'all start in the middle of the story. This world has been going on way before me, you, and anybody that could be in a position to govern it now. So what you're doing is being passed down generations of godly, godlessness. For anything to grow out this ground on this planet that, that the creator made and for another man forbid you to take it for fear of putting you in a cage, that's his idea. And now you're seeing he's changing his mind about his idea. And it's okay for you to actually have something that the creator made. When I say the reveal is now, it's really that simple. But it's like it's this film or this plastic coating over most people's brains you can agree, it's transparent as I make it. You can hear it and agree with it, but to formulate an action and actually be pissed off enough to say, fuck that, I want my freedom back, it's not in y'all. And that's the lack of the, the presence of the creator, the presence of your God. You really un don't understand the being that you are. You, you forfeit that to another man when you can't even... Think for one minute that you shouldn't be paying another man for work that you do on the land, right? That's, that's a tribute to a king. First Samuel, um, let's go to First Samuel 8 and 15 in the Tanakh, y'all. Yeah. And what I'm starting to understand now is, <laughs> well, I, I knew, but... The Hebrew Bible is that that which everything flowed out of. And the Jews knew, the Christians knew, the Muslims knew, and everybody got their own spin on it where the basic order is don't add, don't subtract. And when you follow that to a T, you can see how fake all three of those things is. None of them are mentioned. None of them. Muslims, you're not mentioned. Christians, you definitely not mentioned. Um, Jews, you not mentioned. And Moshe's order was don't add, don't subtract. He didn't call any of those people anything but Israel. And that's basically a covenant. It's a generic thing. Same as Hebrew. 
don't carry any blood, it carries an order. And again, establishing a nation out of incest is highly unlikely with the with the God that we have. So Israel probably substituted for Ishmael because Ishmael was the legitimate first son. And I'm not going to stop saying that either because I can read and I'm not afraid of y'all, especially you, you Sunday church dwellers, any of you business building worshipers, you really need to rethink what you're doing. You know, in the, in the essence from the ground up, from out the earth to, to now. And as far as time, it'll repeat. So this is in the book as well. There's nothing new under the sun. The sun goes, the sun comes. So anything, any dealings that you could come up with in your mind, it's already covered in this book. You know, I got a half a century here and I see the repetition. What they once called a hole in the ozone. Now they coming back with climate control. They repackaging it. It was Ebola one minute, Zika the next. Now you sitting in... COVID. And for you elders and people that's older, it's that plastic lens that I'm talking about. You just sit back and allow it. So you think that the creator is going to step in for you with all your hands together, your praying hands. What are you actually praying for? For a Superman to show up? When he gave us health, he gave us the blueprint. He gave us everything we needed to exist in prosperity, right? You read it in the book and some, somehow you can't take the lessons and connect it to your own wicked ass selves. You, you side with the aspect that you doing what's right and you not. You, you are these people. You know what I'm saying? In the book, these lessons were written from you. So I'm at 1 Samuel going down to 8, y'all. 1 Sam 8. 1 Sam 8. Verse 8. All right. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn son was Joel, his secondborn was Abijah, and they sat as judges in Bathsheba. But his sons didn't follow his ways. They were bent on gain, they accepted bribes, they subverted justice. All the elders of Israel assembled and came to Samuel at Ramah, and they said to him, You've grown old, and your sons don't follow your ways. Therefore, appoint us a king to govern over us like all other nations. Sam was dis displeased with that they said, give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord replied to Samuel, heed the demands of the people and everything they say to you, for it is not you that they have rejected. It is me that they have rejected as their king. Now, for this, this right here is just uh, a read for regular people. But for me, when I see this part, it's like we rejected the most high as our king. Now, kings usually require some things, right? Some tributes and shit like that. Homage, taxes. But the most high requested from us, crazy enough, was that we do each other and ourselves good. He got rules for not murdering, rules for not robbing, rules for not stealing. And we don't see the most high, so it ain't like we're going to rob him, her, it, steal from the most high, stab, kill, rape. We can't do that to the most high. The way I eat, it's not going to damage the most high. Eating clean. Or dirty don't mean shit to the most high, but it's an order for me to live the best way I can. And people, um, they tend to debate that. This shit is crazy. Anyway, let me get back before I lose my spot. Samuel was displeased that they said, give us a king to govern us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said, he the demands of the people in everything they say to you. Because it's not you that they rejected. It's me as their king. Again, that's order. So y'all rejecting order as your way of life. That's all the creator asks you for. And everything that's asked is, is conducive to having life. You know, living it long and pros prosperously and not geared towards a heaven that you ain't going to see. Like, this work is for us right now. You know, this work is for our kids that's coming after you. This is to keep us moving in that direction. 
And the Lord replied to Samuel, he the demands of the people. I said that. Like everything else they have done ever since I bought them out of Egypt to this day. To this day. Forsaking me and worshiping other gods. So they are doing to you. Heed their demands, but warn them solemnly and tell them about the practice of any king that will rule over them. Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this will be the practice of the king who will rule over you. He will take your sons and appoint them as his charioteers, horsemen, and they will serve as outrunners for his chariots. <coughs> That's a draft into the army. He will appoint them as chiefs of thousands, fifties, and they will have to plow his fields, reap his harvest, make his weapons, and the equipment for his chariots. That's basically slavery when you, you don't have a, a say in that. So these are his hands. He will take your daughters as perfumers, cooks, bakers. He will seize your choice fields, vineyards, olive groves, and he will give them to his courtiers. Basically taking the land. And now anything you do, is subject to the king's rule and you paying taxes based on what the king say. He will take a tenth part of your grain and vintage and give it to his eunuchs and courtiers. He will take your male and female servants, your choice young men, your asses, and put them to work for him. He will take a tenth part of your flocks and you shall become his slaves. The day will come where you will cry out because of the king whom you yourselves have chosen, and the Lord will not answer you on that day. But the people would not listen to Samuel's warning and say, no, they said, we must have a king. And you hear so many Christians say they wanted the king, so he gave them a king. Y'all don't even get it. You still giving a king. Every time you go to the booth and pull it, you saying, I agree with this king shit. Y'all don't even get it. If you're going to elect anybody... To rule over you or to govern has got to be based off the word of God. That's the only justness. Because if I'm partial to homosexuals, then I'm going to turn my back or I'm going to pass law in sight that's agreeing with that. Now, most people are emotional when it comes to something like being homosexual. But a just man don't rule off emotions. He rules off of what God said. And if you got a problem with what God said, like you got a problem with humanity. Because all of us being born, it's right down the road. Nobody knows as a baby what you're going to gravitate towards, what, what life society going to come your way. So from rip, you to be taught this stuff out the womb. So it's second nature in you that anything outside of God's word will make you move a certain way. It's, it's like everything else. You're born thinking that you're black. And that's put in you because if you had a, a white baby that was put in a black house, if he socialized, he would not know any different until somebody told him. It's the same thing with this word of God. So all y'all saying, I feel like I'm a woman or it's bullshit. It's, it was nurtured in you. Nobody educated that shit out of you because that's what it is. You nurtured and educated to your society. Society bred that shit and said it was okay. If every house raised their kids on the word of God, what would we be worried about? I mean, it's there. And people act like, oh, no, it can't be that. It can be that. I'm doing it. And then when people want to make comparisons, you don't want to compare the right shit. Y'all competitive till it come to doing right. Then you want to slide it off as, oh, you, you self-righteous. I am fucking self-righteous. I am. And, and that's to put you on blast. You need to be too. We're not going to back up out of it. I want the conflict with you, motherfuckers, just to prove you don't know what you're talking about. And it's been that way forever. And as long as people turn the other way and allow the shit to happen, the most high allow it to happen. Shit ain't going to happen to me because, you know, I disapprove of it wholeheartedly out in the middle of the square. I don't approve of any of this shit. That's why I'm here right now. Loud voice with parts of the Bible people never read. And it's about the lesson. And as long as you're not reading it in a lesson-wise manner, people won't get it. Well, I get it. And I'm going to show up and keep getting it. And maybe you will get it. And understand that it's not about some religious look at all. It's about work in a day-to-day -day fashion and serving a God or creator that you can't see. So in turn, you serving mankind. And don't you participate in that?
Or would you like to go out and be murdered by somebody? Or somebody you love go out and get murdered? And then your mouth is hanging wide open because you practice don't murder, but you don't practice eating clean. That's a strike against you. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that's the easiest thing. Y'all people disgust me when you say, oh, I'm struggling with this, that, and the third. That's weak as shit. You either put it in your mouth or you don't. And y'all grown people. That shit is unacceptable. All emotion. And y'all raise kids to be that weak. Backbone. Nothing. Sitting on jellyfish. You either do or you don't. You either die or you live. Y'all want this in-between hiatus bullshit. You think if you don't say anything that it won't touch you. You're going to be charged. Acquiescence is a charge. So when I say I don't pay taxes and I keep talking that shit and y'all don't see them coming for me, hitting me up with anything, because I don't have to. You know, they ask for a king, not me. I keep the word of God. The fuck do I need a king for? In this land, whether y'all understand it or not, the only thing if he can be governed on is God. Y'all take the Statue of Liberty, the Jesus, the Muhammad, the rabbi. Y'all fall for that. Because y'all fall in order with the society, but the society is based off God, not not vice versa. Or oh, I could murder the fuck out of all of y'all. See, y'all take what benefits y'all from God and push the rest to the side, and then you allow it to happen. You allow it to happen. As much as you think your voice don't count, the creator is listening. So your hardship is going to be determined on that. Oh, you agree with this shit? Got you. Gonna send some your way into whatever scale it might be. So don't hold your mouths wide the fuck open. Don't be scared. You know the book is here for everybody. You as well as me. But y'all want a king. You want to go out and continue to vote. And every king in this book fucked up. Every king in Israel. David, big fuck up. The biggest king you know. The biggest fuck up you know. Those are lessons. God's word stayed the same. David had a lapse in whatever. His emotions went somewhere. He saw that ass. He wanted to tap that ass. The Most High was like, don't tap that ass. David did what he wanted to do, so the Most High tapped his son's ass. That's a lesson. Y'all see that part. You think, well, it's different for you, right? Of course you would. Y'all Christian. You came in. In a, in a whole new book, not even understanding. What the nature of the narrative that a relationship was in the first place. Y'all been playing church for so long, it's hard to hear the truth about stuff. And I'm no longer like humble about the word of God. I don't have to be because I see so much that y'all don't know. Y'all running around playing. Y'all men of God. Y'all elders, y'all pastors, y'all rabbis, your imams, it's all a hustle to these niggas. If it wasn't, society would look a lot different. It's not that hard, you know, and I don't like a lot of people. I don't have to like y'all. I'm not emotional about that. I'm a real, intelligent human being. There's been people that I don't fuck with at all. I just don't fuck with them. I don't got to dominate them, show them that they the bitch. I'm going to teach them a lesson by not being in their life. If I'm in in a mode that I'm driven by doing something to somebody else, that's a mind fuck. Like, I'm a sick motherfucker. If it's to the point where I'm not worried about my happiness as much as I'm worried about making somebody else not happy, that's some sick shit. Or even controlling somebody else. I've been seeing lately, like, a lot of things, this passive aggressiveness, in the black families, and I'm talking about the elders from my mom to Munch's mom, the things that they just do that they can't let go of, right? Um, I want to use my son because he's my biggest, um, that's my biggest success, like seeing him be the young man that he is. And I was in this house that, that, that raised this young man. Uh, he could have just went whatever way he wanted to go, like all these other kids. Me and him could have had some real friction in the house. It would have been bad. But it's always a choice. And all props, he held the line. No problems out the young man. He was the shit. 
But it was a blueprint that was laid down for him as me, as a dad, right? Not having that blueprint. And if anybody not liking me, that's all good. Like, nobody gives a shit. But that son that I have, he validate me as a dad. And that's what I was put here to do. The next generation to raise them in a way that they supposed to go. So y'all don't have to worry about my son murdering, raping, robbing. None of that shit. He was raised under Torah. Like, even before I knew I was raising him under Torah, I was raising him under Torah. Now the cap is dead. He, um... He walked to out on his own now. You know what I'm saying? And he get it. Sharp as shit. He actually pointed out some verses to me. You know, when we first got off into this, he was my scribe, man. I was so proud. And it wasn't a forced thing. You know, like, our relationship is always... It was, it was just like in the wild, how the animals showed him how to live. Not tell him, but walk him through it. And they get it. And he was always there, my little cub, like, right behind me. And it was about teaching him, but also allowing him to explore and see what was what. And I took interest in some of the things that um he was actually into, the skate, and that's totally him. You know, video games, I wasn't big on when he came, I started playing them. So we living out life. It's not this, and it is photo shoots because it's a lot of that stuff. But our things was always, this is what we really do. We watch movies together. Last night, I watched the movie Buffed Up with his mom. That's a movie about the Cartier glasses, right? Now, she's in that mind state, but before that, it was him watching all these movies with me. Like, my little, and he, he got it, you know? So, he was socialized that way. His humor is off the hook. He not as outgoing as I am, but it's not a lot of people that are. And, and especially having the kind of personality that I have for him to be able to, to be good with that and still be yourself. Because it could be overwhelming by having an outspoken parent or something like that to the point of where you are introvert or shy to where you won't speak up. But you're not like that at all. So those are good characteristics. And he's a man, so he had to find that out from somewhere. I'm his dad, nigga. Anyway, shout out to my son, Wiz. And what we had about 30 minutes, that's enough for the day. I needed to come in on the Sabbath and shout y'all out because the world going to keep shouting y'all out. It's going to keep beating down on you. And there's got to be a place, an umbrella to stop that, that rain. And um, the word of the creator every time will shut all the bullshit down. But y'all just got to travel to the truth, man. You come into this stuff and memorize shit from the standpoint of what they want you to memorize it from. You need to start challenging some of this shit. Start actually reading a book. Stop being so fucking arrogant, trying to get an agreement, trying to be a part of the party that you don't even know if it's a legit party or not, right? Shalom, y'all.